Oh shit. Oh, we're gonna have a problem then. <laughs> Yo, man did a crash bandicoot. You saw that? <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's up, everybody? We are on episode 15 of Mushika Tensei, which is called Slow Life in the Doldia Village. I guess we're just going to be staying over now for a little bit more. Yeah, in the village itself, whatever remains of it, though, because the whole place was basically put on fire, right? I wonder what the damage is going to be and how much larger the city itself might have been then, but um, I guess we're going to find out. Yeah, that's the thing. So last episode, a lot happened. I myself just came off of watching it. Um, the biggest surprise to me was actually the final sequence where we basically got a quick little glimpse of Fatoa again, right? And we saw that Sauros, you know, Eris's, you know, granddad was actually killed, which I figured, I mean, the guy, sort of the leader of the region, I guess he must have been or whatever the hell he was. He, he said that Sauros had failed to respond appropriately to the mana disaster which i figure that's probably not what it really is because it's like okay what could saros have possibly done yeah i mean i don't know like the 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 man of disaster we do know of course that there was the uh, there was the planet as well that he saw up in the sky so saros might have been sort of prepared for it or he might have seen something coming right he knew that that was going to be bad news still how like how much can you hold him responsible for is of course the question that you ask yourself right um that being said, yeah, so he, he was he was killed there, but I figure it's more like for political purposes. Because that's, of course, what was mentioned already a bunch of times a bunch of times by, for example, Philip, who said that there are people that wanted him dead, right? And um, yeah, I figured that they just saw this as an opportunity to get rid of Sauros because they could, simply said. So uh, I really wonder where that's all going to lead and if we're going to get more glimpses when it comes to that. Because in the meantime, of course, the biggest part of the episode was just focused on Rudius in the village, who at first, of course, he got locked up and he was in this prison cell, whatever. Uh, treated it like a hotel, which it definitely wasn't. Met a new inmate uh, who was called Geese, right? But then the thing was put on fire and we basically figured like, oh, the guy, um, Gallus, he was called, the, was basically one of the smugglers himself. He had set Rudius up to become trapped here and basically serve, I guess, more as like a distraction um yeah while they could while they could attack the uh, uh the village here because there's i'm guessing well we know that the people in this village they've had this this situation with these smugglers for a long time seemingly right and there's a bunch of them so this is like an ongoing situation um even if yeah maybe all the smugglers by now have been taken care of you would think well with with uh with Gallus himself taken care of, that hopefully means that the rest, uh, well, he's the leader, right? So that, that means that the situation now will have quieted down at least. And we're going to see then where that leads as far as the uh, the villagers themselves, you know, go and if they're going to be able to help us somehow, yeah, uh, well, get back, I guess. I mean, I don't really know what we're, what, we're, what we're doing at the moment. We still, of course, have Roxy as well on our tail trying to actually figure out where Rudius is and so maybe it's going to be you know it's going to turn out to be one massive get together here eventually I can only hope but that being said it's still a little bit unsure what's going to happen from here on out so I think I've said enough guys we're just going to dive into the episode at hand but of course if you enjoy my reactions to Mushka Tensei then you can already watch the next eight episodes straight away over on my Patreon page which is going to be linked on top of the description over there, we're already going to be on episode 23. And I think what that means is that we will have finished the first season. Because there's supposed to be 23 episodes and one OVA, I think, as well. I'm still going to be watching that too, of course. And then starting season two. But you can basically catch up on all of that straight away right now over on Patreon. Which, like I said, is going to be linked on top of the description. So go and check it out. Your support is very much appreciated. And allows me to make these videos in the first place. And then with that being said, let's dive into episode 15. Okay. Well, I mean, Rudius did prevent the fire, of course. Oh, shit. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's a party over here. They've got some muscles, too. <laughs> oh, God, this show. <laughs> what is it doing to me? Yeah, of course. I'm not the only one, thankfully. Oh, the dog. Yeah, the dog doesn't care about any of that. He just wants to play. Oh, shit. Well, watching the girls, clearly. 
Oh shit. Oh, we're gonna have a problem then. <laughs> Yo, man did a crash bandicoot. You saw that? <laughs> oh, dude. I'm surprised she's keeping a tempo. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great thing to see, honestly. Like, it's not just character development on Rudius' part, but also Eris. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. Of course they're gonna know Ghislaine. I hadn't even thought about that. Yeah, me too. Uh, she looks like she could be his sister. Ooh. That might be some... Okay. Yeah, like that might be some rivalry or something. Oh, yeah. That's not a healthy relationship. Uh, I don't know if he's gonna want anything to do with Eris now anymore. And Rudius. Oh shit. Putting up for her. Yeah, that's good though. Uh, I don't think he's really gonna do much with that input though. She's like, put some respect on her name. Well, yeah, I mean, everybody changes over the course of time, right? Well, he is a little bit relieved to hear that, I think. Yeah, he did not hold her in his memories the same way. The question still remains... Here we go. What happened to her? Because she was caught in the same blast. <laughs> Auntie Ghislaine. Yeah, I figured that. She looked the exact same with the long gray hair. <laughs> I like the way they talk. Yeah, she had her own grievances with certain... Certain things she was supposed to do. Sure. He can do that. Student turning into the teacher. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, 
Yeah, she's strict. Oh my god, right on the- I don't know if this is the best location for sword practice though. You're gonna be falling off that thing, you better hope that you- well, maybe you're gonna land in some water, but... Sword King. <laughs> it's not a joke though. Oh my god, I love how the dog's just sleeping on his lap. Yeah, right. She was really developing herself. Mm. Wow, three months. Yo, dude, time passes so quickly in this show. Before we know it, Rudius is gonna be mature, dude. Well, I guess we're still waiting for him to turn 15, right? We know what's gonna happen then. Uh, well, they're not gonna be coming along with you, are they? Exactly. They're gonna feel sad about this. Well, you can come along. They like these people where she's at. What? Fighting? Oh my god. Yo, she got mad at her for like saying that she was gonna leave. <laughs> Turn into a hissy cat. <laughs> Yeah, damn, dude. A little possessive, isn't she? Hmm. <laughs> Good riddance. She won't admit to it now. Oh. Okay, okay, okay. Well, at least she's honest about that. So the question now becomes, are they, are they going to be coming along? Okay, okay, young Galane. <laughs> she was, well, kind of acting, acting up like her. A wandering swordsman? Don't tell me this is Paul. I mean, probably was Paul, because if it's a swordsman, that's that's what Paul was known for, right? I don't know. Yeah, telling her to make sure to leave on good terms, because she's going to regret it in the end. I don't know, you wonder, are they going to be coming along or something? I feel like Galen's um, brother will want to see her as well. <laughs> oh oh they figured to to go because they yeah they uh, like rudius could hear them so he he knew what they were here for <laughs> What, but to accept? Oh. <laughs> they made those. 
They they got kind of the same hobby as Rudius does. Wow, look at these frogs. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we didn't even get to see that. We didn't get to see much of Rusa at all. He's definitely improved his reputation here, though. Oh, man. I just feel bad that they're actually going to be leaving them behind. But I guess they will. Yeah, I guess they're just... I guess the beast people are just staying here. Spa with me? Oh, he wants to see it in that way. Yeah, it kind of makes sense. Like, he's going to be able to see a little bit of Ghislaine in her this way. <laughs> uh. Okay. That was a quick fight. <laughs> Splendid. <laughs> what was that about? Yeah, me neither, but I'm sure we're about to get it explained to us. They fought like it was a handshake. Oh man, yeah, it does suck to say goodbye to them. Yeah, I mean, how long is it gonna take? Oh, what? Oh, uh, well, this guy is coming along. Yeah, I guess, I guess. I mean, I, I don't feel the same appreciation for this guy as I, <laughs> as I do the beast people, though. But we'll let him. Oh, some kind of stone, yeah. Seven great powers. Seven strongest fighters in the world. Technique God, Dragon God, Dragon God? North God? Well, North God was supposed to be Gallus, right? Was he like... But they call him North Saint. I don't even remember anymore, but... The top four. Okay, those are going to be the big ones. This is just like Demon Slayer. Upper seven. <laughs> yeah, that was crude. Well, something tells me you're not teasing that for no reason, though, so can't wait to meet him. Alright guys, well don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and of course you can watch the next 8 episodes straight away over on my Patreon page, which is going to be linked on top of the description. Go and check it out. I think the nice thing about this episode is to see character development not just come from Rudius, if that makes sense, right? Like, he was not the one in this episode learning the life lessons, really. Um, that that sort of came down to, well, honestly, it was these two beast people, and I their names are complicated. Minotona and Tosina, I think they were called, right? But, um, yeah, anyway, Eris' friends, I should rather, I guess, call them. But, uh, well, Eris herself, in a way, as well, it's not like she really um, overcame anything. She just showed a side to herself that I hadn't really seen yet, I would say, which is that 
you know, when um, uh, when Galen's brother basically revealed to us that he was Galen's brother. Yeah, he he of course didn't look at Galen uh, the same way that Eris and Rudius did, and so he kind of insulted her, and he. Uh, uh, well, he was disrespecting her name, right? And Eris stood up there, and 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 she was like, you know, she 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 literally just walked up to him in the rain there and said, "You're wrong about Galen. This is who she actually is. Uh, this is how I know her. She's a very admirable person. She's helped me, you know, my whole life." Um, and that was just great to see. Again, it's a side from Eris that we don't get to see enough, especially when you think about how she started off. In the early episodes being so sort of rash and um i don't know i i guess she was always still caring but she didn't like showing it that's for sure maybe, maybe she would have liked to show it more for people that she was more comfortable with as well you know because of course when we met her early on it was just her and rudius the whole time right and she was mad at rudius because she didn't know him so i don't know again i don't know necessarily if like we really haven't seen the sight out of her yet but still it's like it's a part of a personality that um mm, yeah I mean, again we haven't really seen it yet i feel to this extent in the show maybe it was always there but if that was the case we didn't really see it i guess right that's what i mean to say ultimately but um yeah other than that again it was these like these these beast people that uh one of the two who basically started the fight because she wasn't able to deal with the fact that like eris announced that she was leaving um and so yeah like literally beat her up over it uh it's weird i'm getting like a strange deja vu feeling right now while i'm saying this because i feel like something similar to this actually already happened when it came to eris and somebody else leaving early on in the season but i can't quite remember it now but i feel like i've, I've brought this up before but <laughs> i don't know if i'm catching on to something there or not but like um you know, I watch these episodes, of course, basically on a weekly basis, on the same pace as you all. So it's been like a good two months since those early episodes or whatever for me too, right? So it's like, it's hard to always remember everything that, that happened exactly anymore. But um, what I mean to say is like, you know, she herself, of course, was basically told by her dad uh, to go and apologize to Eris and that you're going to regret this for the rest of your life, just like he did when it came to Ghislaine, because he never saw her again. And now he learned that like, oh, Ghislaine was actually not the way that, you know... He, he was happy at first about the fact that she was picked up by the swordsman, whoever it was. I'm still wondering if they're talking about Paul there in that situation. But um, they, sh they showed actually the guy having a scar on his face, I think. I should probably look to see back if, if Paul has the same scar. <laughs> I mean, I can only imagine that it must be him. But they didn't show the face either, so something is up with that. But um, we, we still have a lot to learn when it comes to the gang too, you know, right? Like Paul's gang and uh, uh, the one that Ghislaine was part of as well. But anyway, I'm straying way off topic. Like I said, the girl was going to regret it for the rest of her life if she didn't apologize now. And so she did. And that was just nice to see. Overall, this episode, not a lot happened or something, right? But it was just kind of wholesome again. It was like, it reminded me sort of of the early days of Mushika Tensei, the first couple episodes where we saw Rudius making that progression and stuff, right? And now... Rudius himself, while he's still showing the same sort of childlike uh, mentality, you know, when it comes to all the sexual stuff, you know, like literally glancing at the uh, at the beast people and at eras they are playing in the water or whatever, that that's not that clearly he has some well he has some lessons to learn still in that regard I guess right and to just control his urges let's say that's a, that that's still going to be a big lesson for him. But I feel like other than that, he's definitely become much more mature already, right? And he's taking on certain responsibilities, which is nice to see. Um, yeah, and therefore now, it was these other characters that had to show basically doing the same thing. And so I really enjoyed watching that unfold in this episode. With that being said, guys, I hope you all enjoyed my reaction and review to episode 15 of Mushika Tensei. If you did, then of course you can already watch the next 8 episodes straight away over on my Patreon page, which is going to be linked on top of the description. Over there, we're already going to be done with the first season, so go and catch up on all of it straight away. Your support is very much appreciated and allows me to make these videos in the first place. And then with that being said, I want to thank you all a lot for tuning in, and I look forward to seeing you back in the next episode.